Hello, this is Sharad here. Yeah, so today I just want to talk about the very uh, famous architecture about the data breaks. You guys might be know about the data breaks. So first I just want to talk about the data breaks introduction. So data breaks is a unified analytics platform built on the top of a Apache Spark and designed to simplify big data processing, machine learning and AI workflows. It is architecture is a cloud native leveraging lake house model that combines the benefit of data lakes and data warehouse. The key components include a control plane and data plane. And the third one is a lake architecture and compute cluster and collaborative notebooks. So these are the things. So first I just want to talk about the, uh, like uh, when you see my slide. So I just mentioned um, eight things. First is control panel plane and second is data plane and lake lake house architecture compute clusters collaborative notebooks delta lake ml flow and auto ml and unity catalog so these are the very very important components of the data bricks architecture even some of, some of the interview they ask these kind of question so when you read this one uh, what is a control plane so like uh, i'll just give you some typical example like whenever you're making any data warehouse pipeline so what do you have to do some you have to run the jobs and you need to manage interface and you need to store a data so what happened so control panel means just you're uh, managing an environment like a database environment and you are running your jobs and data plane plane means here also i mentioned like where are you storing your data so if there is a cloud account like suppose you have a aws account suppose you have azure account or suppose you have gcp account so all your data will be stored into these cloud account like it might be aws it might be azure it might be gcp so this is just high level uh, understanding about the difference between the control plane and the data plane and the third thing is very very important like a lake house architecture so generally they make a medallion architecture uh, medallion architecture means like a bronze and silver and gold layer so i'll talk in detail like a bronze me bronze layer means like when you're extracting a raw data from the source file so that data will be uh, stored as a bronze layer and the silver layer means like if you're cleaning your data and you're defining different kind of data sets then data will go into the silver layer and the next layer is very important layer gold layer gold layer means you are defining your business rule and when you're defining in a business rule that is a gold layer so this is a we call a medallion architecture so i'm just briefing out then we'll talk in detail about my next lecture the fourth one is a compute cluster so compute cluster is very very important why so when we set up the data bricks notebook so what we have to do first we have to define a clusters and when you run your notebooks, so that notebooks will be um, running under a particular uh, distributed Spark clusters. So this is just definition of the compute clusters. And the fifth point is notebooks. So collaborative notebook. So you guys have worked in so many um, languages like Terraita, Oracle, BTEX scripts, and Unix. They use all the ETL things, but through uh, Databricks has provided one very good tool, notebooks. So in notebook support for language, like you can use Python, you can use SQL, you can use Scala, or you can use R language. By using this language, you can create your own notebook pipeline, like ETL pipeline. If you want to load data from one source to different layer, just, just create a one notebook, and that notebook could be used in, in any layer, like you know, by using a control plane, you can run the job. So this is the fifth point. The sixth point I just, I just want to talk about the very important Delta Lake. So Delta Lake is a, like, a, this is a provided by the Databricks uh, uh, company, like a Delta Lake. So you would have listened like a GCP also has some storage, AWS also has some storage as your, but if you want to use a um, Databricks storage, like a lake, so you can use a Delta Lake concept to store your data and you can get your versioning of the data. So this is a sixth point. The seventh point is very important, ML flow and auto ML. So you can, uh, uh, like a, based on your input data, we already know what is a machine learning. Machine learning, we extract the data, we train the model, and then we create a machine learning workflow. So this th that uh, facility is also Databricks has. There's ML flow and auto ML. And the last one is very, very important, like uh, Unity catalog. 
in the ticket low why it is important uh, because when you are working a particular project you need to manage your data managing data means governance so you need to main manage data quality you need to manage data security and data cleansing and data access and data policies and data assets so everything come into the unity catalog so there's a some architecture behind that you need to create a unity meta log in the within a data breaks so then you will understand more but these are the very eight um, important components like someone because if if you are a new in the data breaks and data breaks is very hot market all over the world so these eight terms at least you should know so at least you if you are talking to someone in front of so at least you know what is control pane what is a data plane what is a compute cluster what is a notebook what is a delta lake and what is a unity catalog so these are the thing i just wanted to bring out so now i'll go to the next so as i explained uh, about the uh, data breaks so this slides cover uh, about two things very important control plane and data plane so first i'll talk about the data plane so i'll just take the example if you're working for the etl pipeline and if you want to run your job so what happened when you run the jobs you definitely you need to store some data so there i have given some example about the aws azure and gcp so here you can store your data and definitely you need to have account for aws azure and google so then we can store a data and the and control plane um, uh, control plane what happened in control plane you need to create your notebook and you need to create your jobs you need to create your workflow manager by using these component you can you run your job and you can store data into the data plane so this is a just integration between control plane and data plane and we need to understand data bricks is a third party tool and azure aws and gcp is a big company they also have etl tool like um, aws uh, azure has a data factory but suppose they don't want to use azure data factory they can use a data bricks and also uh, in the notebooks you can use a python r scala r this kind of the language so this is a high level architecture when you see this picture you can easily understand control panel and control plane and data plane so now i'll go to the next slide so the key components of the data break is very very important all of the five components because sometimes they interview they also ask these kind of questions so first we need to understand compute cluster since cluster is very very important when you are setting your project and if you want to create your notebook so first we need to set up a workflow and also top of that clusters so clusters i'll just read through these are the engines of the data they are groups of virtually machines running apache spark to process data in parallel so you can create a clusters in minutes choosing the size and spark for example for example a small cluster for testing or a massive one for the training end so it's very very simple and and also because it's a virtual so suppose in the night you don't want to use your um, data bricks and notebooks what you can you can stop your cluster so you don't have to pay for the cluster costing because we already know when you're working in the cloud environment you have to pay for the hourly basis or daily basis so if you're not working just stop the cluster and whenever you want to test your project again you can run it it's very simple it doesn't take much time the the second thing is very very important delta lake so delta lake is also like a gcp as you they also have a storage but databricks also has provide some delta lake where you can store a data within a open source layer and they also support asset asset transition very important a for atomicity and consistency and isolation and durability generally we use in the bank and the third one is the notebooks notebooks is i'll just give you again example suppose if you are creating your etl pipeline and you want to load data from uh, like a medellin architecture explain like a bronze to silver so just you need to create a one notebook and you can load bit data from bronze to silver and you can use these are the language python sql sql scala and all and the last one is a unity catalog unity catalog i explain because if you are making working on the pro project data governance is very very important because data governance team if they don't agree and they will not if they don't give a sign now you cannot make you your project in production like if they ask your data security data production and data cleansing data quality and all of these things term um, and so based on the and data breaks provider unity catalog is a very very good component it uh, saves your cost it saves your time 
and is a proper architecture for Unity Catalog. And the last one is ML Flow. ML, um, uh, ML Flow and Auto ML. So, and that's a, it gives you the understanding about the machine learning. So, machine learning we already know, like it takes data from the raw and it does some validation, it trains the model and it gives the output. But we have component ML Flow and Auto ML. Thank you. So, now I just want to talk about the last slide, then I'll finish. So, uh, why use Databricks in real world? These are the very, very important just for the ingestion. Ingestion we already know. And cleaning of the data. And also you can analyze your notebooks. And you can build your machine learning model. And also govern. Govern means data governance. Like uh, you need to provide security. You need to provide data quality for your sensitive data. These are the very five important thing and you we already know this generally we use for the uh, typical data warehouse project ingestion cleaning analyze build and go on thank you so i'll share this video i hope you like it and please subscribe my youtube channel and please forward to your friends and circle and please like it and 